This is Arts Alive. I'm Linda Philippi. My guest today is Jason Buer, and Jason is a playwright and a theater manager and has an extensive background in theater and all things theatrical. Mm -hmm. So I'm really excited to have you here today. Thank you. I'm excited to be here. Yeah. So you, you said that you, you studied playwriting and theater management. And that, that's correct. Mm -hmm. uh, I, um, I just recently graduated from the University of Iowa with a, a BA in playwriting from their theater department and mm -hmm. an undergraduate certificate in, uh, uh, in writing. Uh, and then in 2004, I graduated from DePaul University with a BFA in theater management. So, so what made you decide to do that? Uh, I had been doing theater um, since really young, since in high school, uh, and it just seemed like a logical fit. Um, it, it, it was a way for my parents to, to feel comfortable with me doing theater and, um, and for me to feel like I could I can contribute to the arts. And, and then I did that for several years, um, mostly working in box offices and, and working my way up that way. And then mm -hmm. uh, in uh, about 2013, I decided I wanted to go back uh, and work more on the creative side of it. Uh, I went back and um, studied uh, playwriting at the University of Iowa. And you probably, um, just in your work at theaters and things, have lots of ideas for what would make a great play. Oh, absolutely. Anything can be a play. You can look at it uh, from a number of different angles. Uh, mm -hmm. In fact, I, um, while at the University of Iowa, I was working on a, uh, a play about uh, Dr. Robert Kehoe and Claire Cameron Patterson, and they were uh, influential in the in the movement to get, um, well, it, in a public and scientific debate to have lead removed or, or to remain oh, on, the, right. on the market. So. Um, I did a lot of, um, I actually went to the University of Cincinnati and studied at the, at the Robert Kehoe uh, Special Collection there and actually looked through his, some of his um, scientific papers and also some of his private papers to kind of get an idea of who he was as a character. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I have, um, I have plans to actually go to um, Caltech and do the same thing for um, um, uh, Claire Cameron Patterson and then also for Ed Edmund Muskie, who was also uh, heavily involved in that movement um, to get um, lead removed from the market as well as um, uh, influential with the uh, Clean Air and Water Act. Did you by any chance see Radium Girls? I have not. I've heard that, good things about it, that. It's a good, you know, what it's about, right, is the girls would work in the factory and they'd be painting yep. the clock faces and they'd be licking their paintbrush and they all died of these horrific diseases, which yeah. was radium poisoning. I mean, I think it's so interesting because you think, on one hand, Dr. Kehoe, oh my God, really, a play? But who would have ever thought there'd be a Broadway musical about Alexander Hamilton? I know, I mean, right? really? I know. <laughs> and it's winning all these awards. Mm -hmm. I think, really? <laughs> who knew? Absolutely. And, and it just goes to show that the, the level of creativity that can go into any kind of theatrical uh, exactly. activity. And, it, you know, I mean, really, it's, it's nice to be able to educate as well as entertain. Absolutely. You know? Absolutely. And, that's, and, that's, and this play, which I, I, I finished um, not too long ago, I've actually submitted to the Sloan Foundation for a, um, a grant, and hopefully I'll actually be able to, to, hopefully I'll be able to land that. I should find out the next month or so. Yeah, I like that. That's, what a good angle. I mm -hmm. mean, really. Yeah. You know, in, in terms of being able to fund something and get it up and going. Absolutely. Well, and if, and if they take it, it's a commission grant. So in addition to getting to winning the award, they'll also actually put a, a version of a version of that as, as well. So okay. we'll see. So right now, what are you up to? Right now, I'm also studying fandom and fandom as a as kind of a cultural and societal movement. Uh, and I'm, I'm actually working with Mask and Mirrors right now, which is a, a Tigard uh, and Tualatin based community theater. Um, that does community theater. They're putting up a, a trip to Bountiful by Horton Foote. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm looking at community theater itself as a fandom. And, and I got interested in fandom in um, near the end of 2013 when I met uh, Peter Balistrieri, who is the uh, curator of science fiction and popular culture at the University of Iowa. And he's in charge of, I think, the largest um, or one of the largest um, collections of fan fiction, uh, um, convention materials, and other kind of uh, science fiction fandom ephemera. So when you say fandom, you mm -hmm. mean being a fan of Ab something. Absolutely. That's what you're talking about, like the, the sort of phenomenon of masses of people going to like Comic-Con and that sort of thing. Absolutely, but, okay. but, but even more specific than that, these are the fo kind of folks that, that will gather in groups, um, more than just a convention, but like little sub kind of subgroups, they will write their own fan fiction, they will restore cars, they will um, build props or costumes. So beyond just sim simple consumption, but actually going deeper into, into whatever subject that they're interested in. Which is kind of like uh, the Robert Burns thing that they do in Scotland. I mean, there's all these, you know, clubs and things, and Robert Burns is a really big deal, and I just saw this on Facebook. It's like hashtag Burnsy or something. Mm -hmm. You're supposed to find the nearest 
statue of Robert Burns and go take your picture with it, things like that. Absolutely, yeah. it's something very much mm -hmm. like that. And, and I, in, in my studies, not only have I studied fan fiction writers, but I've also looked at tribute bands, um, oh. <laughs> I've worked looking right. at, at reenactment groups, mm -hmm. um, cosplayers, um, even the costume groups like the 501st or the Mandalorian Mercs. These are guys who, who dress up in Star Wars costumes and kind of reenact or, or um, kind of connect with their, their fandom in that way. They connect with Star Wars in that way. You'll have to come in May because we have an alien parade in our town, oh. like a UFO parade, alien parade, and there's a whole contingent of people that come as stormtroopers and Darth Vader's always in there, oh, and that, it's actually pretty cool. Well, that sounds a lot like uh, Riverside, Iowa, which is the future birthplace of Captain Kirk. It was one of the places oh. I, I, I <laughs> right. actually went to and visited, um, and they have Trek Fest every year. Okay. Um, so the, 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 ca the cast from both the original series and Next Generation, they all come out and they visit. They have this big, long parade um, on the birthday of, of Captain Kirk when it will happen in 200 or so years. When, when is his birthday going to be? Uh, it's in March. I'm sorry, no, it's, it's in the summer uh, okay. in, um, I think, June or July. Okay. I, it's escaping me right at the moment. <laughs> See, I always think of him as an Aries. Uh, so I would say, have said March or April, but anyway, that's all right. Yeah. I mean, not everything has to be perfect, right? Um, so, so with the, the trip to Bountiful, then, mm -hmm. let's talk a little bit about how that's working for you. It's going very well. They've, um, they're a very open group. They've, they've pulled me uh, right in. Um, I, I'm usually, at this point, I've read for almost all of the characters uh, as, as a stand-in for um, the way the, the, uh, the show is being rehearsed. Joe actually separates us out into a couple of groups so we can be a little bit more efficient with our time. Okay. So I usually end up reading for uh, Mother Watts or Jesse May or, or Ludi um, just to kind of fill the gap and, and, and help out and help the other cast you know, get uh, familiar with their lines and their blocking. So, and with your background, I mean, I'm sure this is this is you've done this many, many times. I've, I've done a lot of reading. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm not a very good actor, and I'm, I don't read all that well. But I, it's enough that they can they can act off of me and and, and form <laughs> off of me. But at you least. can pronounce the words. I can absolutely <laughs> pronounce the words, and that's that's absolutely uh, what good. I'm doing. Okay. And and one of the things that I'm that I'm doing in, in addition to uh, helping out with the show is I'm also interviewing the cast and, and the production team and kind of getting at. Um, why they do it beyond just simply liking theater and loving the art form, but also getting kind of underneath that and, and why go through the um, the effort of putting on a show when you could when you could go to theater, you could volunteer at at a regular theater when you could donate. I wanted to know specifically why <laughs> this way and, and um, what I figured out and and what both in conversations with, with Mask and Mirrors people, but also with other fans, is that um, it, it's kind of a way of feeling powerful. It's a, it's a way of connecting with something that, that um, uh, was important to you either um, growing up or, or an, an important part of your life. So mm -hmm. it, it, it's a place where um, you as a person felt powerful and, and you're trying to recreate that feeling or recreate that moment time after time. You know, I've really asked myself many times, why is it that people are so drawn to theater? You know, especially people who are very passionate about community theater, because like many things, it's all volunteer. It takes a ton of time and oh, energy. Yeah. I mean, and it takes you away from everything else. And I finally figured out that people who love that, that's what, where they really feel the most alive. I mean, that's absolutely their passion, whatever they do for work or cooking dinner for the husband or, you know, whatever it is with the kids. It's like, yeah, okay, that's kind of like, but my real life, the way I really live in me is at the theater. Absolutely. It's, it's, mm -hmm. it's chasing that feeling of community. Mm -hmm. it's, 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 there's, there's something that happens. The theater family and absolutely. The, the cast and they really bond. And I've, I've, I've noticed that. Yeah, there's, there's, a, mm -hmm. there's a, a feeling, a, a joy that comes with that. So now, out of this work that you're doing with this particular production, now does that result in some kind of like thesis or magazine article or what I, comes I'm, from that? I'm actually working on um, an article. I write in a very immersive style, much like George Plimpton did mm -hmm. or Andrew S. Thompson or um, uh, John Jeremiah Sullivan. So that, uh, really kind of getting into the subject and, and spending time with, with the subjects as much as possible. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I, my goal is to write a feature-length article with this, but long-term, I want to take all of these articles that I've written and, com and compile them into a book, um, either as a, either as a uh, master's the thesis at um, Portland State University or mm -hmm. um, just on my own. So we'll see where that goes. That's so interesting. I mean, the way you're describing it, I can kind of see it as a New Yorker article. 
mm -hmm. because you know how the New Yorker, they do that. There's like that really immersive piece, and then they back off, and they do that sort of narrative arc, and then they dive back in and give you some personal stuff, and I think that I could see that. That's exactly what I'm doing. So mm -hmm. you know, I'll, I, I will look at the, the production itself and, and the people that I'm working with and then zoom out and look at the kind of longer term, the, 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 the historical aspect of it. Community theater is a very old tradition. And in fact, when oh, yeah. it, um, community professional theater really has its roots in community theater. When mm -hmm. you look at um, uh, the early religious festivals in, in York or in Berlin, um, these were the places where um, professional theater actually began because um, passion all, plays and things passion like that. Plays, absolutely, mm -hmm. um, those were the tricks and trades, the tricks and, and styles, and, and um, the people that worked in those uh, passion plays eventually ended up becoming Shakespeare and Goethe and, and, and people like that. Mm -hmm. um, they got their start in these these smaller uh, developing those leather lungs. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> That's it. So uh, really, this is pretty fascinating. So this will take you through, this current project will take you through the production mm -hmm. that you're doing now. So yeah, I've, been, I've been with them since auditions. Um, mm -hmm. I, I'm working with them uh, in rehearsals right now. Uh, and then also um, take it all the way through uh, until production as well. Now does, it, does this encompass any photography or is it really simply just a like interview observation process? Interview observation. Okay. Uh, before, um, I don't have the equipment yet to, to actually take pictures and that kind of thing, although that's something I should be doing. <laughs> I, I don't know. I mean, I, th I think in a way it's probably you're, you're more invisible in a sense. I mean, there's less of a barrier. If somebody sees a camera, then all of a sudden it's like, mm. but you know, yeah. when you're just, people are just talking to you, they're almost unaware that it's, mm -hmm. you know, anything more formal than just a casual conversation. Absolutely, mm -hmm. absolutely. Although I'm very clear, you know, that, you know this is I'm, I'm doing this. This is this is what's <laughs> happening. Yeah, I, I'm, this is on the record, so I'm, mm -hmm. I'm very clear about you know what it is I'm doing. So I don't I'm, I don't ever try to hide anything. Um, and in, they've been very open and they've been very giving to everything I've been doing. So. I mean, what a fascinating project. That's so cool. Thank that, you. That, you. That you're doing this. I love it. And then you said you're managing the theater as well. Uh, no, no, I'm not. I don't manage Mask and Mirrors. I, I'm just. Uh, I, I uh, have a, a degree in theater management, mm -hmm. and I do work with um, theaters all over the area. But I don't. Okay. Uh, I don't manage Mask and Mirrors. <laughs> so right now, you're just simply doing the freelance writing. Yes. M more than anything else. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, I, uh, although I do work for Broadway Rose, I'm, I'm their uh, part-time IT guy on the side. Oh, that's right. You said yeah. that earlier that you they do IT. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, that's, I'm sure then you're considered the theater angel <laughs> because everybody loves the IT guy. Yeah, when, when, <laughs> when he can make things work. And yeah. what you mostly want to see with the IT guy is the backside of him working hard on your computer. <laughs> yes. Or uh, down there doing something weird on the floor. Yeah. Yeah. Which I do a lot of. I, 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 I do sometimes have to crawl under a desk and, and plug something in. So uh, That's amazing. Yeah. Well, it's nice to be multifaceted. Yes. It means I always have a paycheck and a full right. belly somewhere. Yeah, exactly. Well, I really want to thank you for coming in today. And, you know, can't w wait to talk. We're going to talk to Joe Silva about Bountiful. But this is really fascinating. And I'd, I'd love to see you come back and, you know, maybe talk a little bit more about your project sometime. I'd be happy to do that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Great. I, get your... uh, I did. It was a lot of fun. It was. It Thank was you. A, yeah.